after watching the video lectures today, students will be able to name acids and bases as well as write appropriate chemical equations. So we're going to go ahead and explore acids uh, and their nomenclature. Uh, we're going to talk about acids in a lot more detail when we get to the acid and base unit. Um, but we will encounter acids and bases as we progress through uh, this particular unit. Um, so we're going to need to understand and get familiar with the nomenclature associated with each. So binary acids are actually a type of acid that consists of two elements, hydrogen as well as usually one of the halogens, either fluorine, chlorine, bromine, or iodine. So you're going to be looking at something with a chemical structure uh, with this uh, set up here. So notice you have a hydrogen and then that halogen attached, okay? Uh, and the way that we're going to name these species is first uh, we're going to use the prefix hydro and then part of the other atom, the non-hydrogen atom, and add a IC or IC suffix to that portion and then acid. So HCl is going to be hydrochloric acid. Okay, now we learned earlier that this would be hydrogen monochloride. Um, however, we don't actually ever call it that uh, in our day-to-day -day chemistry uh, comings and goings. So hydrochloric acid is how this would be referred to. So something like uh, HI, okay, that would be hydroiodic acid. Okay, so that's the nomenclature procedures for your binary acids. You're looking for uh, a hydrogen directly attached to one of your halogens. Oxy acids are a little bit more complicated. Um, they usually are compounds that obviously have oxygen um, and a hydrogen, but then there's usually some other uh, non-metal present. So um, what you'll notice uh, in our example problems here is that you'll notice that each of these um, species look like one of your polyatomics, okay? Um, and if we analyzed how uh, this, these acids would behave in water, you would see that ions would get placed in water and you subsequently would have your nitrate and nitrite uh, polyatomic. So what we're going to do here is we're going to look at the nomenclature for these species. Okay, so first of all, you're going to give part of the uh, polyatomic's name. Okay, so this is nitrite. Okay, so nitrite, so we're going to include the nit uh, portion. Um, and then we're going to either add an OUS or IC ending depending on what kind of polyatomic we have here. Okay, so if our polyatomic ends in ite, we're going to put the OUS ending. Um, if it ends in eight, we're going to use the IC ending. So when we go ahead and we look at um, our examples here, okay, we have HNO2 and HNO3. Your HNO2, um, NO2 is nitrite. Um, and so we're going to have the OUS ending here. And NO3, or your nitrate ion, is going to um, give the acid the ick ending here. Okay, um, and you'll see other ones like uh, H2SO4. Okay, so that's going to be sulfuric acid. Um, H2SO3 would be sulfurous acid. Um, and basically any setup where you see this hydrogen attached to one of your polyatomics like this, um, you're going to have your acids. So obviously nomenclature is important, being able to understand uh, how to get to that nomenclature is important, but we can also just uh, do some memorization as well. Okay, so these are the common acids that you guys need to be familiar with. Um, we have our uh, some of our binary acids here in the early section, um, and then we quickly move into our... Um, oxy acids. Okay, so these are the acids that will be commonly uh, expressed or show up and come up in um, your work uh, and your problems. So make sure you're comfortable with them. Bases um, are another compound that we're going to be looking at uh, when we get to the acid base unit, uh, but of course they show up in um, the reactions and such that we're going to be dealing with over the course of this unit. So um, basically strong bases are just going to be named um, uh, just like the ionic compounds that they are. Okay, so hydroxide containing compounds are just going to follow the nomenclature procedures that we know for ionic compounds. So potassium hydroxide, barium hydroxide. If it was with the transition metal, obviously you'd have some sort of um, Roman numeral indicating the charge on that metal. So um, one other base that you guys uh, need to memorize um, is NH3, okay, or ammonia. Not ammonium, but ammonia. Um, this is one that will come up as well. We've already talked about it a little bit, but it is a base um, that's not an ionic compound. So go ahead and just work on memorizing that now. 
So now that we've talked about our asses and bases uh, and how to name them and what they're called, let's go ahead and um, approach uh, formula writing. All right, so if we go ahead and we look at chemical equations, uh, we have a specific formats that we need to follow in writing chemical equations. Um, the first thing I want to point out, guys, is that we do not um, use uh, equal signs in chemical equations, right? We do not use equal signs, we use arrows. Sometimes it's a single-sided arrow, sometimes it's a double-sided arrow, um, but basically you're going to have an arrow that um, basically divides off your reactants and products. Reactants are always written on the left-hand side, products are always written on the right-hand side. Okay, so those are just two little formalisms you guys need to get used to. Remember, we're not using the equal sign and reactants go on the left, products go on the right. So in chemical equations, there are some symbols that we need to discuss um, and get familiar with so that we can correlate it to um, questions and, and the English language that's going to be used to express them. Okay, so the arrow symbol that you see here, this first one, um, that's going to represent uh, like things being produced or made or yielded. Okay, um, so words like produces or forms, those are going to be things you're looking for to indicate the writing of that arrow. Um, the plus sign is going to delineate or differentiate between different reactants or products. Okay, so I could say, you know, A and B react to form, um, B plus C. I could use varying uh, different vocabulary here, but basically it's uh, differentiating um, different reactants or products from each other. Um, S in parentheses as a subscript represents that your substance is a solid. L in parentheses uh, as a subscript represents liquids. G represents gases. Um, and these will all be subscripts. And then lastly is aqueous or AQ. The AQ in parentheses as a subscript next to the element or compound symbol is going to tell you that that substance has been dissolved in water. Um, and we're going to do an entire unit about aqueous substances um, later on down the road. But for now, AQ, you need to know that it means the substance is dissolved in water. Okay, and lastly, if we have an arrow uh, with a triangle above it, that's going to indicate to you that the reactants have been heated. Okay, um, so these are some of the uh, f uh, vocabulary um, words that are going to connect to the symbols we're using in our chemical um, formulas. And as you can see, there's a lot more words than symbols here. So the symbols are good for sh uh, creating shortcuts and allowing us to easily speak with one another. If we're learning to write chemical equations, uh, we need to be able to do a few things. So the first thing we need to be able to do is identify the substances involved. Okay, this is why our nomenclature uh, that you guys have learned comes into play. Not having the correct nomenclature obviously is going to not allow you to do part one correctly. So the first thing we need to be able to do is um, identify the substances. So we should know that H2 is called hydrogen, that O2 is called oxygen, um, and that H2O is called water or dihydrogen monoxide. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to use symbols to show various things. Okay, so first of all, we're going to use coefficients to indicate how many of that substance. So you see this two here and the two here. That tells us we have two um, atoms or two molecules of that substance. So we use coefficients to indicate the numerical amount um, in terms of like how many of those molecules or atoms are present. Okay, of what, okay, is the chemical formula, right? The chemical formulas that we have written here is telling us what's a reactant, what's a product. Okay, and then in what state, what physical state, that's where we have our subscripts here. Okay, they're all gaseous in this situation, but they could be aqueous or liquids or um, solids. There's, there's various options, okay? Now, um, the last thing, guys, I want to point out is that you need to remember the nomenclature for your diatomic elements. When I'm talking about hydrogen, remember it's H2. When I'm talking about oxygen, it's O2, etc. Okay, um, this can cause lots of problems in terms of balancing and stuff like that that we'll be approaching later. So make sure that you are squared away here. We're going to go ahead and take um, the uh, equation uh, that is described uh, in the words below um, and take it from word form into... Uh, uh, chemical equation form. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to write out uh, the chemical equation from uh, what's provided below, and then we're going to highlight and color code, uh, much like you guys will be doing uh, later today on your own. Okay, so first of all, we've been told that we have two atoms. Okay, remember the two is an indicator of the type or the number of, sub of that particular substances. So we have two atoms of aluminum, okay, of solid aluminum. Okay, so we have two atoms of solid aluminum. We're going to indicate the solid with the subscript here. Um, react with, okay, so react with is going to be our plus sign here. 
three units, so three units of aqueous copper two chloride. Okay, so CuCl2 with an Aq down below. Okay, to produce, that's going to be corresponding to your arrow, three atoms of solid copper. Okay, so we indicate our solid down here below. Um, and it's our plus sign, two units of aluminum chloride aqueous okay and now what we're going to do is we're going to color code everything um, uh, in the uh, word form uh, to match up with things that we see in the equation above so we have two atoms okay that coefficient two is going to be labeled there two atoms of solid okay it's indicated here as solid aluminum okay that's the substance we're just going to leave the element itself blue okay they react with the react with is the plus sign here okay um, then we go to three units. Once again, that's the three coefficient that we see in front of here. Um, we have our aqueous um, substance here. Okay, so we've indicated aqueous here. Okay, and then our substance is copper two chloride, which we're going to leave as blue. Okay, now to produce is the arrow we see here. Okay, um, and then three atoms. Okay, the coefficient corresponds there um, of solid. Okay, we got our solid here, okay, our solid copper, okay, which is going to be left in its elemental form, okay, um, and then and here, the and is representative of the plus sign between these two, okay, and then we have two units, okay, two units of aqueous, aqueous aluminum chloride, which we're going to keep as blue, okay, so notice the corresponding um, color coding that you see here, these are the things that you're going to be pulling out of um, word problems and such so that you can get to the point where you have your written out equation. Something you guys may have noticed in the last problem um, is that uh, when there were uh, descriptors of the substances we were talking about, um, there were the words atom, molecule, and unit. Okay, um, you'll need to be able to utilize uh, these words in order to go from formula into um, the word form. Uh, so basically the opposite of what we just did. Um, and in that case, when you're talking about individual atoms, so like the copper and the aluminum, you're going to call them, you know, atoms. So three atoms of or ten atoms of. Um, if you're dealing with a covalent substance, you're going to use molecule as a descriptor. And when you use ionic substances, you're going to use unit. Okay, so CO2 is a non, uh, sorry, is a covalent molecule. There's three of them, so three molecules of carbon dioxide. Okay, um, uh, two, uh, magnesium is just an element, it's just by itself. Okay, so two atoms of magnesium is what we have represented here. And this is an ionic compound, the MgO. Um, so we have four units of magnesium oxide. So uh, make sure that you're using the correct um, terminology uh, when you're writing out your word forms. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and take uh, the equation that we see here, um, and we're going to write it in word form and then color code like we did last time. Okay, so in this case, um, we have one atom of solid zinc reacts with two, two molecules. of aqueous hydrochloric acid, okay, there's your binary acid there, to produce one unit of zinc chloride, sorry, excuse me, aqueous zinc chloride. and one molecule of gaseous hydrogen. Okay, so now that we've written it out, we're gonna go ahead and color code much like we did last time. Okay, so we have one atom. Okay, so obviously we don't write the one coefficient, but it's there. So one atom of solid solid zinc, okay, reacts with, okay, so your reacts with here is going to be 
your plus sign. Two, okay, two is going to be your coefficient here, molecules, so two molecules um, of aqueous hydrochloric acid. To produce, it's going to be our arrow here, okay, one unit, okay, so coefficient of one in front of the zinc um, of aqueous, aqueous zinc chloride, which is the substance here, and it's going to be our plus sign here, one molecule, okay, coefficient of one um, of aqueous hydrogen. Okay, so this is the color coding process. This is how you go from uh, words to formula and vice versa. And these are the things you guys are going to be expected to do. So make sure you're paying attention to the coefficients. Make sure you're paying attention to the phases. Um, and good luck.